Move to the camera. No, get started. I'd like to uh, open the planning board meeting for Monday, the 7th of December, 2015. Uh, thanks to HCAM. Uh, as everyone can see, we're down a few members due to concerts and probably religious celebrations, etc. Uh, so the fact that HKM does watch, makes the tape for us, helps us, uh, you know, helps our members to uh, be able to vote on the continuation of, of some of our public hearings. Uh, the agenda tonight, we have two public hearings, uh, one at 7.30 for uh, subdivision off of Leonard Street, and at 8.30 we continued Scenic Road public hearing at Forever Source uh, for removal and trimming of some major branches of trees. Uh, I'd like to wish everyone a happy Hanukkah and a big thank you as this is Pearl Harbor Day to a big thank you to our veterans and uh, first responders who are in, I think, all of our thoughts uh, on a day like today. Okay, so let's, uh, we have five members. I assume that you want to continue and, and go forward. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'd like to open the public hearing. Uh, this is a subdivision off of Leonard Street. Uh, Richard Barberi is the developer. And this is proposed construction of a paper street to serve uh, three new building lots. And it's really the design and uh, construction standards. The uh, interesting part of this particular project is this is a street that was laid out well before ever anyone's time that's in this building today and maybe even before our grandparents uh, time uh, so basically the planning board and we'll talk a little bit more about it has the responsibility of construction it's not like we can say no to something that was laid out for you know years ago but we are to ensure that these construction standards are done to current uh, requirements. So without, with, with that, uh, we do have a public hearing for the outline for this project, and we'll kind of use that. Um, there will be opportunity during the uh, item four for the public to add to the outline and, and planning board members. Public is also uh, encouraged to talk about things in the detailed discussion as we lay out each individual item. Uh, we try to go through each item on the outline, come to a consensus, or assign some action items if we don't have all the information we need, and then kind of come back to it uh, at the end. There's also opportunities for public comment uh, in, in the uh, discussion of uh, standards and plan revisions and also right after we do any potential uh, conditions of approval. So with that, uh, we'll start the hearing with a project in introduction and uh, review by the applicant. Mr. Chairman, board members, this is a petition by Mr. Barbieri to construct um, a, a road on a public on a paper street, which has been deemed to be a paper street, which has the import that uh, the chairman mentioned. In I.E., it is similar to an approved subdivision road. Um, the case law goes on to provide that we are supposed to try to, in so far as is possible, um, build it to the subdivision uh, standards. So we have submitted a petition which shows what we're going to do and what, given the limitations of the, uh, the dimensional limitations, what we can do. Right. We had previously come in for a subdivision to add more lots to it. Listening to the board, we came back with three lots. And at that time, to try and gain support of the neighbors, I was given a piece of land to each of them. I thought I'd gain their support, but uh, we did get a letter stating that this person is not supported at this point. Uh, she's not going to be here tonight, but you do have the letter in the file. Okay, uh, we have a letter of support from this person. I haven't seen this person. Uh, basically, you, you have the engineering report. I don't know if you want to start by going over those things, or if you have any general questions. This is a much bigger piece of property because... Part 
where the houses will be. That goes down to the retention. So yours is this piece, not not here. Right, right next to the high school. This is yeah. this is the one here. here. This, and then it goes here. down here. Goes this all the way to the railroad bed. It comes yeah. all the way back up. It comes right along through right. here. This is not. This For right. reference, you can see some of the high school. Yeah, no, I I, I know okay. your orientation. Yeah. Yeah. There's the limits of this side. It was just this mm -hmm. long strip here. Correct. Mm -hmm. Why don't you first kind of in a general view explain how the lots are laid out and where the houses would be going? Okay, sure. Yep. Um, essentially, uh, the Paper Street is, is lined essentially with stone wall uh, on <coughs> the sides of it, or portions of a wall. Uh, existing dwellings are here, house number five. Existing dwelling uh, here for number three. There's a garage, and there's a pool, and there's an old building here uh, that's on Rick's property. Uh, what we're looking to do is create three lots. Uh, we have a zone district that goes through the property, uh, lot one and completely in the RA, and we have lot two that's a split zone between RA and RB, and lot three is the same way. Um, so lots one, two, and three uh, have adequate frontage, adequate area, and meet the zone district uh, zone uh, with requirement. Uh, we have a <coughs> lot four that has no frontage. Uh, that's a kind of garage uh, that is going to be retained by Grandpa Barry. Um, essentially, the topography is it's very gentle but wooded, uh, even including in the existing roadway. Uh, it pitches from south to north in a gentle manner, that direction. Um, the roadway is designed, the, the existing topography is just 2.5 percent, the proposed roadway design is 2.5 percent. So the intention was to try to maintain the same grade that's on the ground now as our final grade. Uh, we proposed 20 foot of pavement uh, with a little bit of berm. Uh, we propose uh, uh, town sewer. As Rick stated, the intention is to give parcel C to the abutter. Possible A to the abutter, possible B to the abutter. Um, proposed houses are shown in this fashion, uh, about in the middle of the lot in each occasion. Uh, driveways uh, shaded in the orange. Uh, proposed uh, drainage is such that we have a swale here to a pond, two pipes that go underneath what we call Easy Street to a basin, pipe from the basin out to the large basin in the back. Access to the basin would be through an existing car path uh, that's on the ground today. Um, we propose, uh, for we've had uh, a few discussions with the fire chief um, back as, uh, I guess, as early as uh, October, as late as October. Uh, he's in agreement as to the configuration of the T with the radiuses um, for turning and maneuvering his fire truck. Um, also, another important thing that we're trying to do here, this this wall, it, it looks nice here, it shows it's nice here, but it, it's really broken up. My intention is to take all these extra stones where we go through and rebuild that whole wall. Uh, there's some big trees within that roadway that I think when we pave, they're not going to survive. So I'd like to be able to take them all out and put all new trees, as shown on the plan. I mean, there's only like five feet between the pavement and the stone wall. Those trees that are there, I don't think <coughs> survive if I go around them. A lot of them are adjacent to the, to the walls as well. They're kind of in more towards the middle or under the pavement. So it'd be kind of hard to say. What we propose is there's some trees here. Those little symbols there are trees here. I think we have like 19 of them that we propose. And the frontage for each lot is. Can you kind of just indicate each one of them? Sure. There's 101 here. Okay. There's uh, 200 and uh, there's 157 here. Does that include the hammerhead or not? Nope. The hand, uh, the frontage does not. The right. Okay. The frontage is here. Okay. The hammerhead would be here with easements. So one of the comments by Beta was that uh, we have an easement for it, but the hammerhead would be on private property. So this has 153 and 47,000 square feet. This says 257 foot of frontage and 52,000 square feet. So the hammerheads would be here. This would be the pavement shaded in brown. All the way through here. Uh, and the lot, the lot lines would be that blue. So that would be three, two, and then one. 
Any questions on the project introduction, particularly members of the board? And so access to maintain your detention basin would be through this person's driveway? No, no, we have actually have an easement here. Easement here. We're gonna reconfigure that driveway. Oh I that, see. So you'll you'll have, you'll have yeah. a direct connection yeah. from the road. Yeah, right here. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Elaine, do you want to give your summary of where we're at? I think just to point out a couple of things. Um, there were uh, four emails that we received after the packet went out from the president, so you all have those. Just wanted to make note of those. Um, also, just to you know, clarify the role, as you indicated, that the board is um, kind of identifying the design and construction standards, but the road has already been laid out. And particularly when it comes to dead end streets, typically the board needs to determine whether there's, whether there's exceptional circumstances for a dead end. But in this case, it doesn't because it's already been laid out as a dead end. So that's uh, kind of a new point at this, at this point. Um, and I wanted to point out one of the um, one of the regulations that um, is not complied with is the screening adjacent to the detention basin. So we might want to think about screening that from the abutters. Um, the bylaw requires, uh, excuse me, the regulations require, I think, two rows of staggered plantings of, of screening that, that should be provided. And also, um, just wanted to clarify and ask a question as to whether it's envisioned that this be a public or a private way at some point. And that, I think, determines how we deal with the hammerhead. Public. Assignment. Public. So if it's going to be a public way with the hammerhead on private property, I think we need to follow up with DPW and find out uh, what concerns they have and what needs to be in an easement and so forth as we wrap that up. And also just wanted to ask the board if they wanted to have a site visit. So something you wanted to think about uh, whether you want to visit the site between this hearing and whatever the next one is. I encourage it. Just so you can get an idea of the trees in the stone wall and what's there. Speak of, let's let's handle the site visit. I would propose maybe 11 o'clock on Saturday, if that's possible. We have a site walk on Wilson Street at exactly. nine o'clock, and yeah. that would give us an incentive to walk fast. <coughs> and stick around. And stick around and just go from one to another. <coughs> well, we could do it early before of Wilson Street too. This is a relatively <coughs> short walk. What, 10 to 15 minutes? I think. Well, you'd say at least a half an hour. Wow. So we'd do it maybe at 8 o'clock. But that might be too early for some of us. The weather's going to be exceptional. On so it is? Yes. That's good news because it was exceptional last weekend. Uh, are any of these lots or things marked out? I mean, this isn't a big site that would enable us to look at it on our own. Well, um, there's no wall will guide you quite a bit. But the lots aren't. I, I guess I guess uh, utility pole here. Clear. Uh -huh. uh, the building is there. Uh, obviously. Yeah. Okay. So I guess this entire side. Uh -huh. Okay. You, you'll, you'll see this wall where it does this. Okay. There's a little wall. Okay, section. that's existing. That yep. This wall there. is existing. So just off the corner of that, we've got mm -hmm. building there. That. Driveway. <laughs> this corner here. Mm -hmm. There's one there as well. That would be off to the left. Mm -hmm. uh, on the ground. Uh, this is all metal. This is lawn. Here, there's all. This used to be an old field. Mm -hmm. and the two here still is a field. Mm -hmm. all, here's our tree line. Right along here. So this is all wide open. So you'll see the pool. Yeah. You're gonna have a house behind the pool, and then this one will be up in the back. And this will be up in the back. And is this wooded right now? Can you walk in there? Yeah. Is this, there's a this pavement here, and then this gravel right up to here, mm -hmm. and then you can just walk your way through that. Okay. Does anyone want to do a site walk in a group? Yes. yes. Is 11 o'clock reasonable? It's fine. It's okay. Do you want one of us there to come I'll go. I'd like to be there. Okay. Sometimes it's helpful. Here you go. Okay. Okay. Elaine, did That's you? It. That's it. Okay. Now we're, uh, I guess it's up to beta. You've got a few comments I would imagine. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to do the highlights rather than just read the letter. I know you have it in your packet. We will go through the letter probably, the packet letter almost item by item, but That's fine. hit the key ones. Yep. Um, so 
So the, uh, let's see, the rounding at Leonard Street, um, it looks like the existing pavement there is outside of the, the layout. It was difficult to tell on the plan. Correct. So um, that should be something that should be cleaned up. I don't know if there's an easement that would be required there, but something that needs to be identified. Um, they've asked for exceptions from the, I guess not really exceptions, they're saying they will not comply with the, or have not proposed to comply with the granite curb requirement, uh, as well as the Cape Cod berm, providing Cape Cod berm with some of the length, but not all of it, and they're not requiring uh, the gutter mouths, granite gutter mouths. Um, let's see, we had also commented on the hammerhead uh, issue with uh, needing to accommodate fire trucks and also the, the fact that the, the access is on an easement on private property. Uh, that should be court like previously stated. Coordinated with DPW. Um, they do not propose sidewalks. Uh, there isn't sidewalk on Leonard Street, so there wouldn't be anything to connect into that seems reasonable. But again, that's just a note. Um, one of the issues that I do think is needs to be carefully considered is the uh, small basin that collects water coming down the hill and then crosses the street. Uh, from what was submitted, the grading of that basin appears to be below the groundwater table, and the invert of the culvert is below the groundwater table. So my concern would be that you're, you're going to be drawing the water table down on that side of the site. Um, I'm not sure how it can be dealt with, but I'm nervous concern. Um, all right. So is that later on in your comment you were wondering about recharge for the houses? Is that alleviate? The recharge for the house, I, I think, is a good engineering practice that it's clean water to try and infiltrate it rather than right. capture it and Take convey it. it. Okay. But um, I think the issue there is simply that um, going to be having groundwater breakouts in that basin during during the spring. And just yeah, what we're trying to do is alleviate swales. We didn't want to have a we didn't want to put a swale. We wanted to uh, we'll put all our eggs in the basket. We really we had a problem with the cover there. Uh, we, yep. know, we need the requirement on the cover for manufacturer. For manufacturer, we, we could relocate that uh, a little higher a little bit up the road, yep. gain gain more cover, but that doesn't really change the invert elevation. So right. So I, I think that some of these get worked out. We can continue to talk about that more. Um, there's no proposed street lighting. Again, I don't believe Leonard Street has street lighting either. Um, Issue already discussed. Um, I think we had, we had commented about the access to the basin, which that's been clarified. Um, cover on the culverts. I believe those are the highlights. Okay. Okay. Now we're at the point where we can add to the outline, it's, and I'm going to take the first shot at it because I've been writing heavily on, on this, as we've been hearing the introduction. Uh, obviously, on item C for the utilities, uh, we'll talk there, but, you know, particularly water and sewer will require some additional discussion. Uh, the hammerheads themselves as a, as a separate item. Uh, open space lot access. Uh, we already said it's a public way, so... I guess that adds a little bit more in terms of conditions and things like that, so we'll probably have some more discussion on that. Uh, the trees, the wall, uh, easements for the intersection at Leonard Street and the Hammerhead, screening of detention ponds, and then the entire beta list off of their letter. Uh, so those are the items that for sure we would like to cover. 
Does any members of the board have additional ones that you would like to add to that? Yeah, go ahead, Claire. <coughs> I know Mr. Barberry has been through a number of rounds with this, and there was a time we talked about access up to the school property, and they, you know, were not at all interested in you in that. Um, again, we are adding on to dead end streets. Um, which I understand it's allowed because of the circumstances, but it doesn't take away the, the safety concern about too many houses on a dead end. And I just wonder if there's any discussion room at all to discuss um, a little piece on each side of this lot line to do some sort of a emergency uh, we tried gravel that. just just I, so that we, all these houses I, I, have a gate. I tried that. And if, if, if this board could get it through the school committee, that mm -hmm. would be great. I, mean, I, I would really uh, I mean, like to see. I'm still open to that, but they wouldn't even talk to me. I mean, I think people realize that, right? We're just trying to trade and do different things. Yeah, I went as far as to tell them I'd build the whole bus thing out for them, right. and they could just pay me as they got the money for it. And I, I went as hard as I could. And I got nowhere, mm -hmm. nowhere. I think Ken was to that. The chairman was at all those, meetings. and and that was those. for emergency, not not looking just to emergency make it access a only. Emergency. Emergency. Yeah, that was when there were more lots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I just wonder. If, uh, I'd be I'd be willing to do that if 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 they would. Uh, they wouldn't even entertain a discussion, or what was the Pretty idea? much no. Did they kept telling me there's too much other stuff going on. Uh, I, I'll go back through this, even though I don't want to, okay? Curious. Originally, they said if, if we could give them the land, they'd kind of give me the access, pretty much. Then they came back and said, well, would you consider cutting the trees and stomping it? I said, fine. Then they come back, well, would you consider graveling it? I said, well, listen, are you telling me if I give you that, cut the trees, stomp it, and gravel what you're going to do with this? Well, no, we, we can't make that decision. So we went to the plant, to the school committee. I couldn't get anywhere with them. So then they turned around after a long extended, this thing's been around a long time, long extended time a period of waiting and waiting they said well even if you give us the land they come up uh, some number like five hundred thousand ten to build out the what they wanted okay yeah. and they didn't have the money for that so supposedly they were losing over a hundred thousand a year having to bust to Nash land so i said look i'll build it out for you your, your number is five hundred thousand six hundred whatever it costs i'll build it out for you give me like eighty thousand a year till it's paid because you're going to save a hundred hundred and ten for maintenance Cost you nothing, and in five, six years, I'll turn it over to you. Sounds like the easiest thing in the world for somebody, right? They didn't want to hear it. Well, you know, it, that if, was if another you, whole big I, plan. I'm just wondering just if we could, you know, I would be this happy week. to just, do that. Just for town safety, just a fire but gate I understand that. road that all these houses on Leonard Street would have a second emergent not for the not for the residents but mm -hmm. fire department or whatever um and i don't know you know i would like it better if i could eliminate the hammerhead and do that I, it would be a much better plan but i just i mean can you really could you yeah. we, we're, we're getting off the outline yeah, i right. just kind of well, wanted to look at that a little more or whether we could have a discussion with the school i mean now you could, you're very welcome yeah. to I, I, I'm what, what just looking part of the part of the uh, part of the let's just maybe just wrap this yeah. up. Part of that discussion with the schools is the schools heard the neighborhood opposition to the right. project, and then also the uh, well that that was that, that, that was part. But and then and then the other part that the school says they don't get the money. Most uh, two thirds or maybe half, at least half of that money is excise tax. That doesn't go into the, the school, school budget. State. It goes goes you know goes into the town it's budget, town. Uh, as opposed to, you know but, to but me to me it's the same pocket because because it comes out and, and with my wallet in. But, but as far as the neighborhood opposition, I think most of it was because they were under the impression that the buses were going to come out this way, which right. was never the intention. But yeah. whatever. Yeah. I'm yeah. Fire. But but yeah. uh, and then there was another plan that was broached with them to. <coughs> build this area out as a field and take the field that's in the way back on the loop road yeah, as a well. bus bus lot it's a, they're about the same side that's really small one that has no parking to it and, and swap those out and that didn't go anywhere either so I I think that well pushing it anywhere right. else is I probably agree. not a waste I mean I could call the chairman of the school committee and, and ask one more time but 
well, other than that. The, the only reason I think it might be worthwhile asking one more time for something very scaled back is each of these others had some other grand plan with fields or bus parking and for whatever reason they weren't comfortable with it but if it appears that this plan from what's being presented has most of the elements to qualify it for approval we're just asking that for the safety of the townspeople uh, there be an emergency egress that will protect all these homes you're talking eight ten houses now not to be used just to be gated can we just put a breakaway gate in there that the fire department could use if there were some reason and, they couldn't I, get and I would like that what I would suggest is we go ahead with this and I give them my word anytime if they come back and say hey look we want to do that I'll do it I mean maybe the planning it should be between the planning board and us well one board to another saying we would like this that's great and we'd you know. appreciate that but again this is not to, you know understate yeah the chairman's involvement in trying to get the other things right. done too and for a much more complicated yes proposal yes. and perhaps town board to town board just for the, <coughs> the benefit of the overall plan um, you know for the benefit of the town I think it would be worth our board pursuing just that safety yes. aspect yeah there, 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 there was some fence issues that they had brought yeah. up that would require yeah. some rework Who of the gates fence down at the oh. parking lot it's it is what it is okay I, I, I will take an action item to, to call us the uh, so school committee people there I don't think so okay so any other members want to put something on the outline between you and what they talked about, I mean, it kind of covers all I, the issues. I, I thought got. we hit pretty much everything, too. But any members of the public want to add some additional items to the outline? Yes, sir, Mr. Terry. Thank you, Ken. Um, could I ask Mr. Barberi a question? Sure. sure. The board. Uh, Rick, the lighting on that room, on that road, is it going to be underground or poles? I don't think there's going to be any lighting. We I know for, to get the electricity to the, uh, to the you know uh, to the th there's a pole there now that would have to be relocated because it's about two feet onto the property. I can't speak for uh, Eversource, but I'm assuming that they would move that pole and then just go underground after that. But go underground. Uh, yeah, would I can't you have speak. Any objections to attaching a couple of light poles to that? Uh, the, the not no, they're not telephone poles type things. Just a a fixture with a light because I think especially if you're going to if continue. That's, if that's something the planning board would like I'd be open to it. If, you, if it's something that's going to go eventually go up toward the high school there's no way in the world you're going to stop the kids from walking that way. They're going to once they're at the football game they're going to come down that way. Going, I mean I know they walk. They walk like the cows yeah. did in the old days. Uh, <laughs> you're, uh, you're going to find the kids yeah, need lighting on that especially if it's lit straight through. Yeah, so I, I think e even if it went on the ground Next to the transformer, the handholds, so they can pop a light post there too. Yeah. But I, I'd be open to that. That's no yeah. problem. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll add, we'll add lighting to the uh, to the list. But uh, okay, we'll discuss that later. Okay. Any other the gate ended up being a break. Any guess, Mr. Kids, can you work on Hook Seventy Five Road Street? Um, I just wanted to back up and ask for some clarification in this email from. Chris Heap to Elaine Lazarus. There's a piece that I feel like we s just completely jumped over, and I'm not sure if there is a discussion that happened outside of the meeting or if <coughs> a decision was made on this, but it says, um, if you don't mind if I could just read Go it. Go ahead. In general, in order to enjoy grandfathered status and as a matter of subdivision control, a lot must be shown on a recorded subdivision plan that predates the town's adoption of the subdivision control law. Technically, this parcel is not shown on a recorded subdivision plan. Okay. So, technically, we kind of, I feel like we skipped over that, and yeah. we well, came to this meeting yeah. with this understanding that sure. it's a paper road, but... Okay, well, Lane, do you want to try to answer that one first? I can't speak for Chris, but I think um, he was um, going back in time, I think before there was a subdivision control law and before there was the ability to record subdivision plans, old ways were created with, by other plans. So when he talks about that, I think he's drawing in things from the even more distant past, other plans that, that were recorded. Um, 
in the registry or in other documents um, before there was a subdivision bill. So nobody had the ability to record a subdivision plan before. I don't know. I know we have some from the 1920s, but even before then, there just wasn't the mechanism to do that. So he's just drawing in those old plans, I think, is that's what he's, where he's coming from. The, I, think, I think a lot I, of these documents are why, quite old. Why you don't see the, say, the three lots, basically the street gets created, like I said, way before we in, in, the, in the, the lawyers all went before we even let them come before this hearing. Right. The town council and, and the lawyer for, for the applicant. Uh, eventually the applicant uh, provided enough proof for all this other stuff that town council was uh, convinced that, that this paper road existed. And it was shown on an old atlas. I know this board's Many seen that. Atlases. And and so uh, that's why we're at the point where the road is laid out. And then any road that's laid out can be, as long as it has frontage, you know, you're, you can split your lot and carve it all up and do all that type of stuff, as everyone has the right to, to do. So basically, from a, a legal standpoint, we're looking at how how the road's going to get constructed as opposed to whether it could be. Right. We've already said to a dead end, in a, in a, not a public hearing, but a, a, a meeting before the board that we weren't interested in just a dead end uh, because we don't approve dead ends and particularly dead ends off of dead ends without emergency access or and even a dead end requires extenuating or exceptional circumstances, I guess. So we're, 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 I guess we're already at that point where we're, we're here. So that's why I was commenting, because yeah. that was sort of a bit of a, a jump for me. Sure. And meeting. So this is all a conversation based on the fact that there's like a cart path on a historic map that's like a little line that... That was like a cart path for horses and buggies with that. And, and obviously, Doug, what, what, how, how else did to the chair? It's much, it was much more than that because this was shown on numerous um, Hopkinton atlases, not as a little cart path, but as a road exactly in that shape bordered by the stone walls. And based on that, and because those atlases are all compiled and kept at the registry, town council said, yes, this is the, equi this is the equivalent of subdivision plan of plans recorded at the registry, and therefore you have Paper Street. And, and the reason that was, we kind of seemed skipped over to you is because that was the charge we were given by the uh, board uh, to make sure we had that before we could proceed. So it's somewhat predicated on count council's decision exactly. that that yeah. is a... E even before issue. town council, when I bought it, they made sure when I got title insurance through a different law firm. I mean, I was quite confident that it was a paid exactly. road before I bought it. Does that answer the question? Though? Does that address your question? It, yeah, it does. So in this case, given that make legal history of this paper road, um, the regulation, for example, that the road can't be a certain amount of length because it's not um, safe in terms of you know Correct. fire vehicles and stuff. That just that sort of un out unfortunately that goes out the window. Uh, and these thirteen non-compliances in his letter, they all not necessarily. It's it's there, it's a judgment as to whether it, uh, those can be done one way or the other, okay. and and that and we will go through like the beta comments and and, and render judgments over the next. Can I make one other yeah. just quick thing? Sure. I just want to put it out there that that whole description of what happened with the school committee, it was. I mean, I think some of us are in the room are very aware it was quite complex and um, more so than that was represented earlier in that It wasn't any more complex than I told yeah. them because that's exactly what I told them. And through the chairman, yeah. um, a letter was written and submitted and signed by 42 neighbors that opposed it. Yeah. Correct. I think I did notice, note there was some opposition. Right. And 42 is, is more than some. Okay. I think we have, uh, anyone else want to add to the outline?
Okay, so we're, we're done. We're, we're on item five for those people that are following the public hearing, um, and which is a detailed discussion. And uh, first one, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of put it right down the. Well, maybe we'll combine a couple of these that are on there. But let's go for the lot, lot road and lot layout design. We we had a pretty good overview of the lot layout. Uh, I think for the record, frontage requirements were met and lot sizes were met. Uh, road layout is the existing layout plus uh, the hammerhead plus the easements. And go ahead, Doug. Mr. Chairman. Um, and we submitted with this package a proposed a and r plan because the land right now is obviously not divided into lots um, we have absolutely no intent we did that to make sure the board understood that there were only going to be three lots and where they were and that they met all zoning um, requirements and it will be, you know, at some point as we're near uh, getting to the end of this that we will ask the board to consider endorsing that plan. But we did not file it with a, a Form A, a 21-day limit or anything like that just to show <coughs> what the lots would be. Okay. So the plan for the lots, I guess, A and R is a approval not required. Uh, you can divide your land up whether you create a building lot or not by just requesting the planning board to sign it. If we decided not to sign it after I believe it's 15 or 20 days, the town clerk will sign it. So it's approval not required. As a courtesy, this board signs almost all the ones that meet the frontage and lot requirements uh, for that because quite frankly even if we didn't sign them the town clerk would sign them within a couple of days after our, our, our meeting. So uh, basically, that's that's how he's subdividing the lot, just to kind of clarify it, which is kind of a continuation of the further discussion. And uh, so, board members, are there, are there any questions on the lot design or whatever? Just a question between lot two and three. If, if in the future, the school committee rethinks its position. Is there room to create an easement for? I mean, you're only going to go like ten feet on each side there. So it wouldn't affect. It's, it's kind of. Like, <laughs> it's kind of. <laughs> that that far that. setback for development is that line there and that line there. But so the lots would still be conforming if yes. the yes. easement through the, were and through the chair. Obviously, we may not be able to achieve those easements if we've sold the lots. So right. that would understood. Be. It was a dimensional ahead. question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Why did you decide on the hammerhead as opposed to a circular cul-de-sac? Was that just a less pavement, or was it the fire chief? The fire yeah. chief. And because because I I remember from before you had a cul-de-sac in there at one point or the other yeah, yeah it was sort of there with more lots exactly. it was more than there was six uh, lots yeah. and this this hammerhead works better than a cul-de-sac well I mean we we could we could put the cul-de-sac there I mean it, we have enough zoning we uh, room for zoning um, I guess the idea was was that we were going to relocate this part of the wall and do what we could with that and kind of give back the old style look along that. But the idea was <coughs> more of a hammerhead than a bona fide cul-de-sac. Well, what I'm trying to kind of get at is either way you're at would be adding area to the roadway under an, uh, an easement right. to make it safer. Uh, You mean with the yeah, circle? This is yeah. less pavement in the circle, right? Am I correct in saying that? 
you know, it looks about the same, quite honestly. I mean, if, if, you, if you just put two driveways without the hammerhead, you know, it would look like that. So adding the hammerhead really isn't that much more. If you put a cul de sac, I, I don't know what it would take, but it, I think it would. I mean, ownership would still be there, but then the, the, the cul de sac would yeah. be something like that. What's the diameter of a cul de sac? 100 feet or so? 100 feet, 80 foot pavement. It's a lot of, I mean, it's a bigger look, a circle, a paved circle. We know what they look like in other locations. Mm. I think we have a letter that the fire chief was okay with the hammerhead, right, already? Uh, I, you know, I mean, I'd rather have the hammerhead. I don't know if you people are hang up one way or another. Clarification. Um, Lane, to the best of your memory, does the letter from the chief say he's okay with the ha hammerhead, or does he have an opinion that a hammerhead or a circle would be safer or better? Uh, I guess safer is a, is a metric I'm looking for. Yeah, he doesn't. <coughs> the diameter of the just that it's, it's acceptable. <coughs> diameter of the circle meets, it's the, meets it's all the requirements. If he's the S230 single unit turning radius, then he's fine, regardless Which of the configuration. Which is 100 feet? No, it's, it's the, if there's a template that's applied. All radius. I think beta can apply as a template. You know, ask our representative from beta, do you think one has got more pavement over the other? I would tend to agree. I think the cul-de-sac may end up with more pavement, but um, without physically drawing it out, it'd be hard to make up. Part of what I wonder about on the hammerhead is whether people end up, I'll say, parking in it with that configuration as opposed to a circle which kind of clearly, it's part of the road. And in this size, would it be a circle where they could park in it or could not park in it if park, there's park a, a circle? Yeah. The, the pavement diameter would be 80 feet. Uh, that's typically what you have. Uh, could have an island in the middle as well. Oh, no. Please don't no. put an island. If you, <laughs> if you make it at that, the kids love playing in those things if we're going to make it one of those. We've done some hammerheads on the condominium part of Legacy Farms, right. as I think many board members know, I'm not the biggest fan of those. But, well, but they case, were also very small streets, which this meets that criteria. You know, this you case, we for, have the opportunity to kind of connect the driveways to the through the hammerheads, and um, I think that takes up. If you, if you include those and think about those, they, the excess uh, pavement on the hammerhead is actually quite a bit less. Mm -hmm. what, what happens if we get rid of the hammerhead but not have a full circle and we if we loaded it on the right side? Kind of kept that flush with the wall. And something like that with, with that and kind of hide the pavement to the right side. Kind of clean up that part of the lot for aesthetics. You get your circle, but it's offset. As long as you can, it meets the turning radius. You know, I think it's going to be bigger than what you just drew there. Yeah, it is, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a little flat there, but yeah. I mean, I was trying to. Retain that. You, a you're bit. basically saying this lot has got plenty of frontage. It does. One way or the other. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. not using the you're not using the frontage of whatever circle you're doing for this. That's correct. It's an easement. It's an easement. Mr. Chairman, I'm not really following where the concern is. It seems to me if it's a parking concern, the only people that would be using it for parking would be anyone visiting either of these two houses. For a short, small number of people, the driveways are long enough. In all likelihood, if you went to visit, you'd pull up to the driveway. I mean, you're not going to park way down here. And if that individual is having a gathering of some sort where you have a large number of cars to the point that they start filling the roadway, they could just as easily fill all around the this cul-de-sac and you'd have the same compromised turning situation if you had cars parked mm -hmm. all the way around so I I'm not quite understanding where the concern is but maybe I'm missing something 
if I may through the chair. You go ahead. Um, that kind of talks to my concern that if there is a, such a small amount of space um, with a certain turn and radius uh, that's needed, that uh, I'm thinking a cul-de-sac is safer. Uh, we should act, ask maybe a more direct question to the fire chief for his opinion on this. Um, as far as safety is, as a cul-de-sac in this circumstance safer than a hammerhead? Because I'm generally just yeah. opposed Mr. Chairman, to the um, I think the safest <coughs> way to do that would be to um, suggest a restriction and deed for those two houses not to block the hammerheads. Yeah, but that's, that's not going to work. The people are going to visit. They're going to visit. Uh, I, I'm not keen either way, really, but maintenance-wise, it's a lot easier to plow the hammerhead and get rid of the snow. Mm -hmm. It's a pain in the ass to plow mm -hmm. all the sacks. Yeah, yeah. But a few people want to call the sack and smell a lot more pavement. I don't Is that going to change stormwater, or I don't want to go back and start over? Slightly. Probably yeah. not enough. If people parked all around the cul-de-sac, is it going to make it's is it same. going to make it just as unsafe as people yes. parked in the Hammerhead? Right, six and one half dozen the other. Mm -hmm. Right. So the safety aspect goes away if you have <coughs> cars. How, how many cars can you get on the driveways before they actually spill out into the Hammerhead slash cul-de-sac? Quite a few. I mean, right? How far is that? Like, uh, that's, was that's, it 40 that's feet? 50, so there's another 30, so mm -hmm. it's 80, 80 feet from here to there. Mm -hmm. Plus the, yeah, probably 80, 85 feet. Mm -hmm. well, people come to my house yeah. and yeah. there's more than six people, they're, they're parking on the street across <laughs> the way. Nobody <laughs> wants to block each other. Nobody, nobody wants to block each other right. out. Right. Right. But whether it's called the sack or the if there's a lot of people visiting, yeah. they're going to fire truck's not going to be able to turn around and up pull them back on. Yeah. If the fire truck gets all the way down that area, all those people will be getting out of there. I anyway. said again. <laughs> yeah. Get out of there again. I just, you. if, if, if there was one thing just that tipped the balance, I hate to say, snow, water, snow water, water have a change of water. All those cows are kind of all about it. I mean, if that's the same pavement. The problem with the sacks is there's very little places to put the snow. Put the snow. It's off to the side, I guess. Is there? Can I make a suggestion? Okay. Yeah. Can I con can I t contact the chief and ask him for a preference if he's given an option of a side load, if you will, sure, circular or the T. And, okay. ask him for and maybe you can maybe we'll you can sketch one out to see where it is yep. and, I'll do that. and see whether or not there's enough pavement difference that it makes a difference one way or the other. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it'll make nicer lots, quite frankly, mm -hmm. but that's. My preference is opposed to. Mr. Chairman, yeah. I, I had one question on the road, on the from the service, uh, from the service road to the back of the house. What's the distance between there? And is there a fence or a stone wall? On the other question? side. Other side, side. side. Right here. Uh, the service road to the. I was thinking the service from here. Right? Oh, so this is the school. The school is right. Paved. To kind of piggyback on your comment, right? If the kids potentially could walk through, what's shielding those homeowners from? Uh, the surface road there. This is this is higher than that. This is down below than that. This okay. road is elevated. This right. slope that's here. This slope here is greater than 25 percent. It's going down. I know. So I think there's a retainer wall that's here. Mm -hmm. Bottom of the dark house. Mm -hmm. Bottom of the here. I know. Yeah. Is it chain um, link on there? I'm assuming whoever buys this is on the there. fence up so the kids right. can not go through the uh, three yard. Their property. Mm -hmm. right. That's an assumption. Mm -hmm. Can we just go back to the cul-de-sac one time? Yeah. Can we propose it without an island? Reason being yes. is that right. that the slope to the yes. right, so would that would just put all the water into that area there, into our swale. Perfect. I mean, to, I, yeah. sorry I was a little late. I was yeah. just there. Um, and I missed the discussion about what the school committee said or didn't say. Can we revisit that just for a minute or two? Or They were not interested in to summarize it. You had a different <laughs> opinion? Oh, you said... Uh, well, I mean, we could go through the points. That well, just, just about the, the access road. Uh, side of it. Well, 
I know that the neighbors had concerns, and we wrote a letter to um, Dr. McClay before you mm -hmm. signed it, and it pointed out a number of things, including to use uh, the school driveway as an access point raised some concerns. So there's concerns around that because during sporting events, during drop off, like multiple times in the day, there's parents and you know, people who are picking up their kids, it's like filled with that traffic. So it's really difficult to pass through. Um, there was also just concerns about general traffic and increasing traffic through there. There were, there's two gates that the emergency vehicle would have to pass through. through right now there are. Yeah. Yes, um, right. Mr. Chairman, might there's you ask Frank to look at the tape for that part of the discussion? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, but I will say, I haven't been there just again and on site a lot. Um, I don't want to give up any future use of the access road for emergency purposes. Um, and I really would like something written into this design that keeps that in play. And so no matter who buys these properties in the future, the town <coughs> maintains the right to Through have... Through the chair, I think what you also missed, Frank, is that the board is going to recontact the school committee to see if there's any um, interest, you know, right. accommodation. Thank you. Yep. But, but regardless of what they say or don't say, I think as a planning board, we should hold this possible possibility for 50 years in the future. Who knows when we'll need it. Well, seeing as how it's not required, it's difficult to do that. We spent an awful lot of time trying to work with the school committee and, and Claire and Ken are very familiar with that. Yeah. So. What, what, what that access road did, Frank, is that allowed them to build a couple more lots because mm -hmm. then we wouldn't be under this process we would be under a subdivision process mm -hmm. and and right but even without the couple lots i'm still willing to do that you know i mean it's wide open right if i may clarify again just one more time it seems like what was discussed in the past was a much higher level Absolutely. full access road and what i am looking at is a minimal whether it's grass or gravel path that is only to be used for an emergency. It's not a road. It's not a connector. It's just would, like I you have elements. That. It was here. always that was you know, the only use minimum, it was ever going to be. Minimum, yeah. minimum. Right. Yeah. yeah. But, but, that was, love it. but that was kind of like if we get rid of the hammerhead and do that, but, you know, beautiful. These are yeah. different levels of roadway. It looks better too. I mean, it's just a dead end with no turning on a hammerhead. Okay. Um, Let's see. So, so we're we're almost there on on talking about the road layout and design. Let me let me just finish it because we're getting close to <coughs> our next hearing. Uh, kind of that goes along with that same discussion is the requirement for easements for the hammerhead and also, I guess, for this intersection down here. And are you saying that on this currently that we're, I'll say, encroaching on somebody's front yard? Currently, that catch basin is about four to six feet on that property. Yep. Okay. It's been that way forever. Now, I've tried it. When we got this report, I tried getting in contact with her. She wrote a letter. She's away. Okay. This pavement is also on private property. Okay. He actually has like a crushed stones in there, I believe, and just after parking. Mr. Chairman, yeah. there's also, you know, obviously Mr. Barbieri did not put that there. Yeah, I understand um, that. it's been yeah. there apparently for quite a while, so I mean, there's also the possibility that it's, uh, there already is a prescriptive easement over those two. Well, that would clean that all up, Th this particularly one, as we're... This one, I don't, I mean, I'd have to ask you people, but... If he just wants to leave it that way, can he just leave it that way? I mean, there's nobody going that way from this road. I mean, I, we don't have any problem with it being there, per se. But you know, you, you, I see you're giving a gift to both of those people. Yes. Maybe for return for the gift, they could give us a yeah. easement over that corner piece so over that we could all leave it. Co correct. I mean, but, but you what I'm saying with leverage. this one here, my, my quite well. Yeah. We can't. It's his property, anyways. We can't take it off. 
That is right. 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 So we, we can't do that. We're not we're not okay. proposing right. that, that yeah. anything get changed in that area. Right. right, but I think you're just looking for the easement on this one. Well, well the, the allowed use, I should say. This side, I think, probably doesn't matter because nobody's going to go that way. The, the town snow plows are going to come through there. Yeah. Excuse me? The town snow plows are going to come through right. there. Yeah, I think, I think we would admit that we need them on both sides of the street. We have a good opportunity, I think, where you were accommodating them with yeah. some additional I, 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 land that may yeah. be a privilege. I, I had that on the line. That was a good one. Okay. I, and on the subject of easements, I would think that the easements for this hammerhead and the easements for the uh, access to the detention maintenance, those need to be permanent run with well, land. Yeah, sure. kind of and those are really easy, Claire, because yeah. Rick still owns that right. property. And actually, so we would reserve right. them when we deed it out. That Somebody never goes away. Never goes away. Right on the back. Part of it. Thank you. Did he come forward anymore or not? Part of the development. If it goes forward, he'd be interested. Okay, because I thought he might have come to the hearing. Somebody called. Committee was he on? Not on the committee. Back piece of was looking for something to connect. Looking for a cross country trail through there for the cross country team, of course. Connect to the center drive? Yeah. Okay, I think it's now the time. Wayne, what would be a good day and time to continue or propose? Uh, the next meeting is December 21st, for us, but that agenda is full. Okay. Uh, so it'll be uh, January 11th. And what, what time? 7 11th is empty at this point? Uh, we have the first hearing for OT. At what time? Well, I have it attended. It'll be at 7.45. We just pushed that back. We haven't advertised yet. Yeah, I haven't advertised. Okay, so we could do 7.30 8.30 on, on the 11th of January. What? 7.30 or No, it's 7.45. I'm thinking, I don't know. We'll be here at 7.30. We'll up. see <laughs> how long it goes. We'll squeeze more people in if we have a snow day. Okay. Okay, so we're looking for a motion to continue the public hearing to January 11, 2016 at 7.30. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussions? Uh, one further thing, uh, no, no, Mr. Chairman, is are we still going to do the walkthrough then on Saturday at 11 o'clock? Yes. The weather is good. Yes, sir. Barker, I'm talking about Grove Street. Is that the public Yes, you're more, you're more than welcome to, to go along. And, uh, we're going to be done by, by, by that time. The purpose is only for the board to observe. So there's no deliberation or discussion that is not a first meeting, it's only for observation. Yes. Not a meeting. Correct. And we'll talk to the chief, and you think we'll do something with the school committee? Or, uh, yes. That's the understanding, right? Okay, so we have a, a motion on the table. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's now uh, 8.30, and I see our applicant for our 8.30 oh, yeah, scenic road hearing is here. Chris, come on. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Open the continued scenic road public hearing for Eversource to do uh, tree removal on Ash Front and Wilson Street and trimming of major branches within several of the scenic uh, roads. Since our last meeting with this, we had two site walks, which several members of the board participated in. We went. Wilson Street, I think it was Claire and I. No, I did Front uh, Street. Ash Street. I mean Ash Street. And then we did uh, Front Street with uh, John and uh, Fran. And we are scheduled to do, and 
Wilson Street on 9 o'clock to about 10.30. We're going to walk fast on Saturday. <laughs> and we will meet... We're, 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 where do you think is best? I don't know where the bulk of the trimming is. Maybe it's only at one end, or is it three? Um, I think that there's actually one or two spots actually on Main Street itself, and then actually right in the corner of Wilson and Main. On Wilson itself, there's probably a couple parking spots as well. So Let's I don't know really where else on the street we'd be able to. What 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 I would propose is we'll meet there, and we'll spot his truck down by the by the lumber mill the by the LNG thing. plant, Up the hill and they the won't tow his out. truck. <laughs> <laughs> they would, that would be kind of nasty. <laughs> yeah, it would. And also pull in right by where Serenity House was, you know, for, we, um, yeah, like we, we could go, we could go into Serenity goes, House, too, yeah. That, that curve street. Or, or Smith curve Mill, I'm sure Mr. Smith would. Yeah, just at the mill, right, because there's some pull-ins there at yeah. the base. You could, you could spot it there. And then I mean, I don't know if there would be anything on Rafferty, either, because there would be going about up to where Rafferty is. <clears throat> well, Rafferty, you're still in the, in the no-parking zone in yeah. the surveillance area, so. Gotcha. Uh, you don't. I mean, we could we could pull on to Legacy Farms Road North at that point because that's open pretty it's much. It's a, good, it's a good long walk going up the hill. It is. It is. Uh. <laughs> okay. Um, I also um, on the two walks we did, I think we had amended the uh, the removals list, so I brought some of those if anybody's interested in taking the Why don't you take the newer the copies. Give, give the newer so this copies. is uh, Front Street. Did you got tags that you can turn to yes, you did on Ash? Did. Yes, okay. we did. Looks like somebody okay. removed all the signs from the ones from the ones on Ash, though. Oh, okay. oh, I just wanted to apologize. Paul Gleason could not be here tonight. He's ill. Oh. Okay. And here's a third copy, and then oh, I'll okay, right. myself just so I can oh, refer oh, to it. Right. Oh, okay. okay. All right. And here's Ash Street in case anybody's. Uh, oh, 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 this is not the whole thing. This is not the whole thing. Yeah. Yep. Why don't you guys have one here? Let's let's start the discussion. Here, here's another. Okay, and and I've got my original notes. Good from the from. Let's start the discussion about the uh, the overall clearance um, that we we're talking about the box and. Frank, you had written me before, and you had proposed something on that. I didn't. Yeah, I, I think. Well, from what I recall, we were throwing around just dimensions, what's normal and what mm -hmm. other communities who've kind of negotiated the box have done, and and I was trying to focus on what I heard in terms of needed clearance for safety. Yep. And so the the first element of that I heard was two and a half feet. Because within two and a half feet, it's unsafe. You've got combustible material near a high voltage line. That's not a good idea. Well, that's, it's not necessarily because it's combustible combustible material. That's an OSHA law. That's with people in okay. general, not coming between but that's, two and a half feet. One, but that's we one aspect consider of the, the yeah. tolerance right, required. Being that the tree can be electrified, that's one of the reasons also. We consider a tree kind of being an extension of that. So the other, the, the next tolerance I recall was a sway dimension of three feet. Yeah. So that's five and a half feet. And then you trim them every four years, so you need to accommodate the growth of four years. And I heard the tree warden say that, you know, he held up his thumb and he said, you know, coming out of a, a cut branch, we're going to get very little growth. So, to me... Well, he, I don't, I don't know, he, he said the diameter of the, of, the, of the branches that are going to be coming out of the cut limb um, is going to be very little. But the length of the branches themselves, I mean, certain trees can put on a growth rates of, you know, three feet a year. You know, uh, and those are typically the more invasive species, like Atlantis. Um, you know, your black locust, which there's not a lot of in in Hopkinton. They tend to be more of a problem in places that have kind of had a, you know, been a little more abused by by humans. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, the oaks and things like that. Generally, I think the extra five feet that we tack on to the two and a half and two and a half compensates case pretty well for that. Right, so I, I guess I'm pretty unclear of the difference between the you know diameter of a thumb and a five foot. I was trying to figure out what is the minimum box we could get to, and and I was thinking that in the if we drew a six foot box around where the wires are between the box, and the only other thing that I remember mentioning was 
the need to get over the top with a bucket, but I can't imagine that you need to get over the top within the the hanging portion of the wires, that that seems more appropriate just where the poles are. So again, I'm trying to minimize the impact to the scenic road by listening to the tolerances that I've heard. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for me it's a logic conversation. And and so if, if we drew a box around the wire six feet by yeah. six feet by six feet, it seems to accommodate maybe without the exception of five feet of growth where I'm not sure I heard that before. And then a bigger box, especially in the vertical dimension, over the poles, that would seem to minimize the disturbance we've got to get for safety. I mean, I acknowledge this is a safety issue, mm -hmm. and we should do what's right. Well, it's not necessarily just a safety issue. You know, one of the reasons why we have the, we ask for the 15 feet above the wire is because, you know, a lot of trees that have overhang branches tend to get loaded down by snow in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that end up causing outages. And Right, but that's a risk that's a risk issue, mm -hmm. right? So your operational risk is anything hanging above a, a wire, mm -hmm. right? And so the easy thing to do would be cut everything up to the sky, but we can't do that. Oh, we don't want We've to do that. We've done it before, and that uh, hasn't road. worked very well. <laughs> right. So, so again, we're, we're trying to create the smallest box we can by mm -hmm. logic, or at least I am. So would that... Uh, that, was, that was what I kind of scratched out in a note to you, Ken, was that kind of thing. The, the, the one thing that I'd kind of I'd like to note that was kind of interesting, as we were walking and we were looking at it, there are some trees where they literally, the wires are touching the tree, particularly on Front Street, and they haven't grown that way. They were installed that way. One actually had a bracket on the tree to, to kind of keep it off, but, but there was two or three other ones where literally the conductor was mm -hmm. rubbing against the side of the tree. And that happened at the time that they raised the poles and put the, whatever the, the name of the, the triangles are on the wires. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, the clearances are not, Obviously, they were okay to do it when they installed the trees or wires, because they're you know they're relatively new wires. But I don't know. What do people think about Frank's idea? Are you th I think you're saying working from the bottom up with with a tolerance. You're talking set about that, a, 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 a ten, six, six, and six is what I think is what. Or I didn't hear the ten. I guess. Well, I was thinking around, between the wires, between the poles where the wires are. It it just seems like six, six, and six is a clearance that gets the job done around the pole, above the pole, where you might have to go over the top of the bucket, um, well, that, that I mean, might we require don't, you a higher I, I'm not, are, you, are you suggesting because uh, you're in the, in the middle of the span that there's going to be some sag in the wires that we wouldn't need to get over? I guess I'm not exactly clear well, why I'm, you're saying I'm that just saying it's a simpler, the pole. it's a simpler system between the poles, right? You've got cable and wire. And what do you need to get on the other side of it for? I can understand why you need to potentially do that at a pole, you've got transformers. Well, the, 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 the issue is that, you know, in the past, um, it was kind of generally accepted as, you know, and the safety was overlooked quite a bit more. And so the guys used to, what they would do is they would be able to manipulate the bucket between the primary phase, which is the one on top of the poles, and the secondary phase, which is a lower voltage wire that's, you know, typically, I don't know, eight feet below that, six feet below that, and it varies in certain places. And so they would actually be able to manipulate the bucket between those two wires and be able to make the proper cuts on the trees. Uh, they can't do that anymore. I mean, the guys will get they get into a lot of trouble. And it's mm -hmm. it's it's Eversource's policy, and it's also all the tree companies' policies that we work with that they're not supposed to do that. Um, and so that's why you know they need to go in up and over the pole oh, or, so or around up so around I and, and up. The bucket yeah. that needs to be clear is mm -hmm. the tree the tree cutting bucket. Mm -hmm. It's not the maintenance bucket. I'm still not sure I understand why that's so, but but at least I, there's a difference from what I remember from the last meeting. I thought it was for the maintenance call that would have you working on the Yeah, well, I mean, that's, that's important as well, you know. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I guess from my perspective, I'm, I'm focused more on the tree guys just because that's what, typically what I deal with. You know, the guys that are doing the maintenance on the wires tend to be quite a bit more protective with their, their, their the gear that they have. Mm. 
you know, the buckets that they use aren't quite as big either, so they're usually coming up from below instead of they. I don't think the buckets that the the uh, the line guys use are even or would be able to actually reach up and around the wires. In all honesty. But why mid span? Do they can they not just go under? Well, they can under in certain the places, place. but you know um, what that would require us to do is cut off what we call the shelf. You know, on a lot of the trees, you know, there's a uh, there's a bunch of branches that will come up, you know, lower down, you know, and sometimes they're in contact with the cable wires and things like that. But, you know, we, that's not a concern to us because they, we don't own them and there's no electricity going to them, so it's not a safety hazard. And people generally like the way that that looks because, you know, you're not looking up and seeing just wires above your head. So we, use, we leave the shelf um, most often. And in order to get go down and up, we would need to take that out. So one way or another, you either have to take it out from the bottom or above. Well, it, you know, it, taking stuff out from above, you know, I, I, I'm using that as, as part of the reason why we want that particular clearance above the wires. But really what it is is because, you know, the fewer branches there are above the wires, the less right, chances there are of actually the, causing the risk outage. management yeah. side of it, which is commercial. Right? That's well, it's not necessarily just commercial. It's, it's, it's a, you know, we're required by law, you know, to, to provide, a, to do have a vegetation management program to provide reliable service. If I may, go ahead. Uh, Frank, one thing that um, helped me uh, kind of get a grip on this is that a picture as a rectangle covering the wires going with as a sag and wherever they go, there's, there's this rectangle of safety. And your original uh, question for us was, uh, was it an 8 by 12? The our standard clearance that we do is is ten by ten by fifteen. Um, the the minimum clearance that we do with we've done with any other town is eight by eight by twelve, and that's typically places where they have established street trees, you know, like city, but did Cambridge, also Somerville. Five by five by eight. I that was not something that I had suggested. I don't know if anybody else here brought that up, but uh, that's not something that. Are there other done. towns that have five by five by eight? No, the minimum clearance we have is eight by eight by twelve. And like I said, that's that's typically something that we've been been able to accommodate where they have you know established street trees, you know like Cambridge, parts of Boston, Somerville. And my question to Frank: uh, Would the eight by eight by twelve fit your view of? Yeah, I'm I'm looking for a tighter box right, based on the tolerances that I heard required, and and also under trying to understand the vertical dimension being the highest tolerance request and, and does that need to be over the entire length including the poles or could it be different between the poles that's again I'm trying to make it as small as possible to minimize the impact on the aesthetics of the scenic road while still accommodating the safety requirements well I mean the other thing you need to take into account is that you know we are not allowed to take anything over what five inches in diameter any branches I believe without permission from the town in one way or another, be it the tree warden, or I guess you know, if I need to take it to the planning board, you know, that's certainly an option as well. But you know that, you know, so the 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 box that we're talking about is not a hard box. We're not going to be cutting entire trees in half. Really, what we're going to be removing is relatively small blunt branches. Well, then, then I'm confused because if it's not really a box, then then you're saying the tolerance required depends. Right. Well, because we're 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 trying to take into account, you know, the aesthetics of the street as well. You know, we would not be very successful with coming back into towns and doing pruning if we were just cutting big trees in half like that big because it was technically within ten feet of the wires. Well, if I may, when I went out on Ash Street with you, Chris. Mm -hmm. We were really looking at individual trees along the roadway that were offending items. Mm -hmm. We weren't looking at all about going down the street and taking a whole swath of vegetation. We were picking out singles, and I'm mm -hmm. assuming that that's the same thing, the same way you looked at Front well, Street. No, I do. he's asking for the box on most of the scenic road, and, you know, I think... The I mean, we were looking at ones that were coming out, but it was obviously right. a lot of the ones we saw were coming out, and they were going to go in to the box where they would get topped. You know, there was a lot of the little ones. 
<laughs> they're coming up right under the wire, and there's just no way they're going to get there. And then we looked at the huge trees <clears throat> that were already, the wires were already snaked through there. And, you know, when we get through those, I think we're not expecting to approve many of those for, for removal. But my question is, um, are you looking to basically apply this box in individual areas where are, there are trees that are entering into that space that needs to be cut clear as opposed to going down the street and just clearing a box swath all the way down? I don't think you are. Well, in, in a sense, yes. Uh, the, the the tree companies that we use, I mean, they are professionals. They make proper cuts on the trees so that, you know, the, the branches, the, uh, the the cuts that are but made. But they just clear all the way down. Well, if I, I would assume that if you've got a, but once a again, branch and, anything that's and, and you've got to cut this off at, at, at whatever the, the box size is, mm -hmm. you'll take it back to where it comes out of the, the tree because you don't cut a branch mid form. Well, you know, mid area. I mean, I mean the proper. So, is the question on the table, um, Mr. Chairman, to go with the 10, 10, 10, 15 box or take it down to an 8, 8, 8, 12 box? Because that sounds like that's the minimum. Or that's that's the minimum that we've done so far. You know, if, if if there was, if you wanted something that was lower than that, it's probably something I would have to take back to my bosses for their approval. And then you'd be back sooner. And we'd we'll be back. Do it. Well, that's the thing. Right, you're back. If we if we did the twelve eight eight, or as opposed to a ten six six, which I think are the two that are kind of really of more interest to us, and we added a condition something like any branches that uh, the removals, I'll say destroy the tree and, and I mean you know it, it, then it has to come back as a tree removal hearing as opposed you know we, we're, we're not destroying another including that terms would be topping it or yeah, yeah, once again I, you know I, I think that's taken care of by the by the by the five inch rule that you guys yeah. have imposed on us yeah. you know that we're not allowed to take anything bigger than five inches so yeah. You know, I don't. I don't expect to be. You know, I, I expect that there's going to be a difference because the, the, these trees have not been pruned in so long. Mm -hmm. But um, so, mm. I'm just looking at some of the wires, and they're totally covered with uh, trees. Yep. This is just the beginning. But those are the wires that he doesn't care about. The wires he cares about are up here. I mean, That's cable though, and stuff. Yeah. I, I just, you know, since our first conversation about this, I drive looking up in the sky a lot, <laughs> driving through Sudbury and Wayland and Carlisle and Concord. I mean, I look look at the way this has been done, and the box has been taken out. And so, you know, I, I think I think it's appropriate to minimize that box. Otherwise, I whatever other side rules there are, it just means you have to come back and talk to us. It doesn't mean that you can't do it. That it's not something by the safety argument can't and shouldn't be done, right? Um, I, I guess I'm not exactly sure what you're saying. We take it out. Well, if if you if you clear the box, yeah, or we 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 establish the box, and you say, well, um, there are going to be things that enter the box because there are other rules that prevent us from with removing those trees. The only thing preventing you from removing those trees is a discussion with this board or other governing boards, right? It's not that it can't be done. Right. The same argument for safety and sway and other tolerances are still there. And so... Yeah. Right? So the box is the box. I think another way to put it is that the board's jurisdiction only extends to the branches that are five inches or greater. You can just go and do everything else anytime. Just putting it in another Exactly. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what they're going to take, right? That's the direction those tree guys are going to take. Mm -hmm. Is if it's in the box, it's coming down. Yeah, if well, not well, not yeah, not necessarily. I mean, within reason. You know, these guys they do quite a bit of residential work, so they they understand how to prune a tree. But you know, with you know, if there's things that are that close to the wires, and yeah, they they are expected to to remove it. Mm -hmm. So let's let's try to settle on the size of the box. I'm here in a twelve eight eight eight. 
and I'm here in a, I'll tell you, it's 10666 kind of thing. I'm seeing no support for the 101015. 10, I support it. <laughs> yeah, you ought to put that in a minute so that his boss, his, his boss uh, understands he's, he's advocating strongly. Well, how practical is 6610? Are you either A, going to get refused when you take it to the boss, or B, just be back the next year, every year, to do trimming because... Well, this is not really going to work that way. I mean, we, we, we work on a four-year cycle, you know, and, you know, we... So we're, we're going to be back in four years, you know, it's just that, you know, probably for that last year or so, it's not going to be all that safe. Mm -hmm. Safe for the cutters or safe for the residents? Because safe for anybody getting near the trees, you know, because residents typically do have, have uh, private tree workers working around their trees as well, you know, and so even though we do prune trees that have come on do that affect our wires from private property, you know, I, I've seen quite a bit of... Um, private tree companies who don't exactly know what they're doing, you know, guys, okay. kind of like weekend warriors. And, you know, that's one of the other things we're trying to protect against is people who are not educated. Oh, Murphy Terror. Okay. Okay. I think we should go with the 8. You're, I'm hearing an 8. Is that the 8, 8, 12? 8, 8, 10? Uh, 12, wasn't it? It's 12. It's 8, 8, 12, eight, eight, wasn't 12. it? Yeah, 12. 12, yeah. 8, 8, 8. Correct. Am I hearing some support in that area? I think, Frank, you're a little reluctant. I think it can be smaller. Okay. I'm a little bit smaller guy, but... I'm with you and Frank. And I'm fine with the 12-8 so scenario. I split... Uh, you want to split, split it? Today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, if we do make it like a 7-7-11, seven, seven, you know, the other thing is, is it's not really going to be all that easy to determine exactly how many feet. You know, we're not... They're not you know, taking a ruler for every Right. We're, yeah. we're, we're not necessarily expecting that. And, you know, we're expecting to, to be trimmed at where the branch comes, you know, out in good... I, I mean, personally, you know, from an all-good conscious, with, from a safety perspective, um, you know, 1288 to me feels like the prudent approach. Um, going deeper than that increases the level of risk uh, to those weakened warriors, to potential homeowners, and the guys that are trying to treat I just don't see is validated by going uh, uh, deeper than, than 12888. I just also worry that it's going to be a fairly wide path because that's 16 feet. And the pavement on well, these roads is 22 feet. I mean, the other thing you need to take into account is that the wires on Ash Street, most of the, the scenic roads are uh, what we call Hendrix, and so they're bundled. Yep. You know, we get the same clearance on uh, wires that are on an open cross arm, and typically our cross arm is about eight feet wide. So if you've got eight, the, the, when the electric phases are eight feet apart, <laughs> and we're asking for another 10 feet on the other outside of that, I mean, you can imagine what the clearances look like in those situations, which... Uh, which would be north and south mill, I think, or... One right, of those north, yeah. North I mill. think, yeah, one of them is two phases. The other one, I think, only has one. Phases is uh, just the, the high-voltage electric wire. Does somebody want to make a motion for, for 1288 and see if it flies? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded for 12888 for the box. With perhaps a, uh, a condition that says that any branches that destroy the tree have to come back as removal. You know, kind of uh, destroy is not the right. We'll find the right word, but I mean severely impact the aesthetics of the tree. It's, yes, mm -hmm. that would work. Okay, so that's in the motion. So it's twelve eight eight eight. All those in favor say aye. 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 There's three. I'm, I'm, I'll add mine, four. Uh, all those opposed? No. And I guess it's uh, four to two. I just didn't want to. No, uh, I, just a question. Are there specific scenic roads that you guys are more concerned with the aesthetics of than some of the others? North Mill, but that's, that's just the, just because it's not, you know, it's laid out, and the wires go from side to side to try to avoid trees, mm -hmm. and that, and it's never been pruned, and never went to the Hendrix wires. Right. So, therefore, you know, it is. 
that could look that one could look miserable. Yeah. I was thinking to South Mill, the first part of South Mill doesn't curve that much. It's fairly straight yeah. shot. So yeah. if you have a big <clears throat> swath that's cut, you've got this yeah. but look. It, but a lot of the trees are gone on South yeah. Mill. I mean, it would basically, I guess what, I, what the reason I'm asking is because um, a lot of the other streets that I'm looking to get pruned, like Granite and Saddle Hill, Winter, yeah. you know, those are those are those are uh, wires that should have been done or are supposed mm -hmm. to be done in the year 2015. Mm -hmm. Front Street, um, North Mill, South Mill, Wilson mm -hmm. uh, Cross, which I yeah. have not asked yeah. to prune yet, but you know, I'm going to be planning to do that. Um, uh, those are all part of a different circuit that's supposed to be done in 2016. Yeah. So. Okay. You know, we certainly could see what the other streets look like. I just think the streets that have a straightaway, you really are going to see that swath more than it can be a little bit hidden if the road if ro the road curves a little. Mm -hmm. But those ones where there's a straight run, you'll see this big straight. Can, can I add an additional comment? I um, I have a particular concern about Ash Street because mm -hmm. we've also added a sidewalk, yeah. which is great, but mm -hmm. that impacted the trees on one side of the road, mm -hmm. and where we're doing this on the other side of the road, it's a very dramatic change in a very short period of time. And mm -hmm. so I, I asked the board to, in the future, consider when we locate sidewalks to see if there is a way to put them on the side of the road where we have these lines, because then at least we're impacting just once. I know it's Except not practical where it switches, but yeah. But to the extent that can be a consideration. And, and, and then you got the poles that make it harder to put the sidewalks in. I, I understand. <laughs> uh, pick your poison. Yeah. It, uh, and, and just for clarification, that motion was on all the streets that, that had been requested, which is Granite, Wilson, Proctor, Fruit, East Street, Front, North Mill, South Mill, Saddle Hill, and Ash Street. Because it's in a general area, those of us that live on the streets, it is you can vote on something if it affects everyone equally. It's not an impact. It's like selectmen can vote on tax rates and things like that, or sewer rates. Okay. So uh, now, now let's get to some individual streets and try to let's let's try to plow through Ash Street. I have the notes, so let's. I'm gonna. I thought about how we would do this. Uh, we, we got a piece of paper the first time. Let's start with the thirty, the column of thirty-six inch trees, because a lot of those are ones that, and we'll work our way back. If I go to the first one on Ash Street. At 36 at 27 it's the Holmans. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Holman has sent given Chris a letter saying that uh, she was fine with removal of the tree. This is at the White House up near the top of Ash Street. Mm -hmm. Extensive decay along the trunk, large leaders over the wires. A lot of the trees I think on private land. Uh, that was the only one that I had question about which way I was going and I think the fact that Mrs. Holman has signed the release uh, I guess I wasn't having too much trouble with that one personally. The tree did not look very good. The tree did not look very good as Claire would say. I you said Mrs. Holman didn't look very good. So I'm going to no. find that. <laughs> My question though, when you take that tree down, do you mm -hmm. just leave the trunk no, no, this stump or they take, we take it down. We, we take it down as close to the ground as we can, but we, we do not grind the stumps, no. Okay. But you don't do the totem pole thing. You cut it down. To the yeah, ground. well, some people actually ask us to leave a totem pole if they like they, they see it as value as a wildlife tree, but you know, typically we take it as far down to the ground as we can get it. Uh -huh. In the town, if somebody probably called up and complained, the town does have a grinder, and they might take care of it for it. So basically, I guess I'm going to propose is that 36 at 27 Ash Street be removed. Okay, let's. The next one was at 15, which is already down. We took it down for the sidewalk. Or I'm sorry, it's 58 Ash Street. We took that for the sidewalk. Next 36 plus is an oak on 100 Ash Street. 
my notes to say uh, to save it and to trim only the dead dead stuff. There was some dead stuff above it. Then I'm going down sporting well, this has got to be right around, right after 160. Yeah, I apologize months. for the last page, by the way. Excel is not one of the strengths. Uh, there was one that somewhere on Ash Street, probably around 116. Rod at the base. I don't have notes on that one. I don't either, actually. It not get as far as 116. You didn't get that far. Yeah, well, I think that those, those trees after, the ones that were after... House number 108 were omitted from the list. Okay. So, I guess we didn't get that. We did not get that far. Yeah, we we only went up the pole to House 108, I believe. Okay. Right. Okay, so we got a few more to look at on Ash Street. Okay. So then, if I go down through the 30 to 36 ones, which I don't see any in that category on the three pages, the next ones I see any on, we have a bunch of 18 to 24s. The first one of that was at 59 Ash Street. To white pine. Yeah, those were actually okay. By those the tree are dead. Ones. They're those stone are, dead. They're already dead. So the tree warden. So we don't have jurisdiction over those. There's a maple on the th on 59. Our notes from the field was to save that maple. There was an 18 to 24 inch maple at 60 ash. And that was okay to take it down. It was almost dead. And we're looking at 76 Ash Street. It was an oak, one liter. Uh, and, and the note was to take the dead only, the dead parts only. Note at 108, the maple. Uh, save the tree, but take the leader with the split oak only. This is a maple tree of 18 to 24 inches. The two oaks at 108 were to save. And the oak at Another one at 108 was a save, and the note was that while well, Chris really wanted it out, we felt at the inspection that we could sleeve the wires. That tree's been there well since before the wires were there. <coughs> okay, then I'm going back to the the 12 to 18 inch branch area, 47 Ash Street was a save, the maple, after 49 was a save, after 59 right, is it, or after 59, yes, save, item 10 was a maple that was after 59, this is between 227 to 228, it was okay to take it down. And we're in the tropic range. Okay, then we're looking at a, at after 59 there's a white pine. Our notes in the field, okay to take it down. At 60 ash, there was one maple, 12 to 18, which was okay to take it down. The ones at um, 66 are already gone. 
white pine after 68 is on private land. And I'm going to the 6 to 12 category. There's three maples at uh, 5 Ash Street. I believe you already have a, an okay from Mrs. Kelly. Mm -hmm. So those are okay to take down. There's a sassafras at uh, 31 Ash Street. Okay to take down. Two sassafrases at 31, which is okay to take down. There was a maple plus two ashes at 41 Ash Street. Some are on the private, but it's okay with us if you got private approval. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I uh, had amended my list for the 41 Ash Street. Um, I got rid of the ash. I think that they were mismarked. It was actually just the two maple, I believe. Okay, okay, two maple then. Yeah, okay. I think they were just misidentified okay. by my forester initially. Okay. Um, were those to save or to remove? Well, those were all dead. Oh, they're dead. Yeah. The uh, after 59, which is a cedar, was okay to take down. There was a pine after 59. This is pole 227 to 228. It was an okay. I'll give you, I'll give you these. Sheets, Kobe, at the end will oh, help thanks. make that up. <laughs> There's two maples at, this is 6 to 12, uh, after 59 Ash Street, we're to save. There was a maple at 60 Ash Street, okay. Okay, two. two. To, to remove. They're almost dead, those are the notes I have. It's just like I'm almost dead too, but you know, hopefully I'll get another year or two out of me. Uh, one birch at uh, 66, so okay. Um, I uh, I don't know if you had this in your notes, Ken, but I think we had, there's a couple of pole spans with some trees in between, uh, 33 to 34, 34, 35, and 34, 35 again. Um, there's a spot where some elm trees were growing heavily into the wires there, which originally were not put on the list, but. Um, I had written them down in our walk, and I know that we did tag those trees. Mm -hmm. Yep, there was there was uh, yeah, the elms were all, all okay to take down, and then we'll get to the last, the smaller ones too. Um, there was one birch, <coughs> sixty six was okay to take down. There was one birch at 68, okay to take down. One hickory at 77 to save. One birch, and I think one elm at 74, it's okay. Two birches and one elm at um, 76, we're okay. At 100, one, was on pr one of the elms is on private and one is on One was on prime, private. I guess we we had no problem with the one coming down. <coughs> okay, then we determined that the ones at hundred were on the private land. The ones at 108, which is one birch and one oak, were okay to take down. What about the, there was at 100, there was also an oak. So we felt that was on private. And that one elm was on private. Was the oak on private too? 
The one Birch was on private at 100. Oh, there's... Yeah, I mean, I, you're, I think you're still going off the original list that I had yeah. to send you guys. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to the one to six, one and a half to six. At uh, oops. ones at five Ash Street were okay to take down. The Sass Press was okay at uh, thirty one. Another one at 31. The Oak at 35. We saw it was on private land. The ones at 41. Some were private, but we said okay. Okay, at the ones at 45 Ash Street, which was one hickory and sm eight small maples. It was okay to take the one small maple at after 59. This is the 226 to 227. And it's okay to take the 11 maples, one horse chestnut. The small ones that are at after 59, 227, 228. A lot of these small ones are growing up that they just, there's no way that they could ever continue up and not be right into, that. Right into everything. There were also many of these trees were in a cluster with a whole lot of other trees. It's not like one missing, you right. really notice it. Correct. And let's see, going to the one elm after 59 was okay. There's one elm and one maple, which were both okay after 59. There was one oak at 60 Ash Street that wasn't on the original list. Maybe it's on the current list. That was an okay. Uh, I actually don't have that one on the new list. This was on from... 231 to 232. In other words, we had an inch and a half to six oak. Yep. With the uh, the maples that were just about dead. Yep. Right. Then we had two oaks, two birch, one maple, which were okay on 66 Ash Street. I don't have a note on 18. I think those were also okay to take down. which was one elm, one maple, two hickory, and nine pine. They were little ones growing right into the wires. There's four birch at 74. One oak, one seven birch, and one cherry. Or was that three elms in a birch? For 74? Oh, no, no, no. That's, a, that's an additional wire area. This is at 34 to 35 and 36 to 34. Yeah, I had between 33 and 34, two elm between inch and a half and six inches. 34 to five, 35, I had three elm, and then the wires crossed across the street, which is why we have 34, 35 again, because it was a different property. Yeah. That's when you lost your pen in the leaves. You couldn't write this it's down. Right. That's, That's right. It's confusing. Oh. It's yes. about where you lost the pen. Yeah. <laughs> On 76 Ash Street, the one pine, the ten maples are very little ones. Probably not even the, the right size. One oak, they were all okay to take down. Two maples and one birch were okay. On the walnut, that was an okay. The maple was to save, I think, at 100 Ash Street. Three elms, one maple, one birch at 
100 Ash Street was okay to take down four maples at 108 Ash Street, okay. 108 again, two birches are okay. And somehow we missed the whole page. So that would be the Ash Street ones. Well, they um, they weren't included with the original uh, newspaper article that went out uh, and the original mailing, so that's why we didn't look at them. Uh, that's why we didn't look at it. They weren't really uh, no notice. Right. That's that's what's the story. So we have a, we have four pages that we noticed. Right? So we did notice that fourth page. Okay. Did we notice the fourth page? That goes all the way to four pages. We noticed them all. Did and it went to one sixteen. Mm -hmm. Okay, well we missed that one. Yeah, we didn't get far. We stopped. We stopped. Yeah. Claire, I think you can. You want to? I, mean, I think we're saving the massive trees that mm -hmm. were that are the streetscape, and the ones the other ones are growing. Right straight for the wires. I mean, it's just like boom, right up. There's just no way. And and again, most of these trees were in areas where there were quite a variety of other trees to contribute to the canopy. That I don't think that we noticed that much. Entertain a motion to approve the removal of trees under discussion. Some of Second. Moved and seconded. Does anyone need any more information, discussion? Discussion? Yeah, go ahead. I think you guys did a great job, a uh, very intensive job, and I think it's wonderful and that you guys did a great job. Hopefully you can join us on this Saturday. I'm aiming for it. Good. I mean, it's... I, Hopefully the weather's good again. We've, we've got copy the first, somebody, lucky the first two times. Somebody told me the weather was going to be great this Saturday in our last okay. hearing. Doug did. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how Doug has a crystal ball on Saturday, but I hope he's right. <laughs> yep. I, I hope so, too. So, anyway. Uh, okay. Further discussion? Seeing none, are you ready for a vote? All those in favor of the list of trees to save and remove, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstained? Motion carries. Okay. So we need the new list. What? Well. We need the new list that was handed out tonight, too. If you could leave us with one of those. Yep. Okay. Be for one of the Ash Street. Let's, okay. Let's, let's try to get through Front Street because it's only two pages. Um, let's just go down. Pole by pole, it might be easier this yeah. for you. Go to, is it, is it go, we're just going to go right down the lines, one one from another. The uh, cross from four front street. This was the one that had the lean, the one all the way over the other side of the street, which is two birches and two maples. Actually, I, I think that that was where it's, where it's comment significantly above, above electrical conductors. That's it's actually the one you're thinking of would be the last oh, okay. ones on the list. There's oh. a 95 front street which is near where oh. it meets up with Ash. Oh, okay. So oh, whoops. Okay, these so other I'm, ones I'm I going the other way around. Yeah, these other okay, ones are so actually so the so small ones. Oh, going okay, up so we're we're, oh. we're starting we're starting at the other end, where we ended up. Down by Clinton. Yeah. 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 Okay, this was in Clinton. It was a vacant line. Line. It was just a bunch of two small birches. All right, a small birch and two small maples. And we said, okay. There was two small birches. This is three to four on Front Street. Uh, we said, okay to those. We said, okay to two small birches at 13 Front Street. And these were fairly insignificant trees. We then, at line item four, from eight to eight to nine pole. This is across from 19 front. We said okay to the five small oaks and one ash. We said there's a six to twelve that wasn't on the list. We said okay to that. It had a significant rod and a hole in it. And there was two big oaks. Wires are almost in contact with the tree. I remember those. 
Yeah. And we said to save them. Yep. Where's that? The one at uh, right up above? Yeah, it'd be seven yeah. to eight. Yeah, seventy-eight. Just 1824. Okay. Just yeah, near Cobbler Way. Save these both. Yeah. They were huge trees. They were huge. And so it, it, the wires were put up deliberately put onto the tree. So when it's they'll need to get sleep. Sli so that's why you, how you're going to handle the both trees in contact yep. with high voltage. Okay. Yep. And they weren't even on the list originally, but we noted those. The from ten to nine to ten, there's one maple. And this is cut. Cut half. What that doesn't make sense. Well, well, that's the one with the big branch. I think uh, remember we were gonna split across the from thing. from sixty five a pillow. Yeah, exactly. It was exactly. it was cut cut half of it. Right, and we talked about that one. Remember that one, Chris? Yep. And it said split in half. We won't kill the whole tree if we do. Do a certain way. I think that's the one. Yeah. So that's been nine to ten across from twenty one front streets. Yeah. Is that the one we're looking at? I think so. Previously yes. topped. Volunteers happens previously yeah, topped. I don't remember that one specifically. It looks weird as it is. Well, let's see. There was on on cross from thirty nine there was two birch and a small cherry. Uh it was okay. We had one that there was 11 little ash at 68 Front Street that are under the line. The we said okay to that cluster. Yep. We said okay to the cluster of three oak, three birch, and one maple under the power line that had been previously topped. This is at 76 ash. 70 Ash Street, there was two, two elms. We said okay. There was two cherries, two sassafras, and one hickory across from 79. We said okay. There was one hickory, four pines, and one elm, small ones across at 78. We said okay. Plus there was a maple in the 6 to 12 range. Yeah, I had moved two of the pines into the 6 to 12 category because I think they were measured incorrectly yeah, at okay. first. And we said okay to those. The ash tree, ash tree on uh, 98 Front Street was dead. The one that was across from 98, one hickory, 18 to 24, we said okay. And that had a huge hole on the back side of that tree. We said the one oak, which is a smaller one at 100 Front Street, we said to save those, the four elms could go. There was yeah, I, I had the, the oak was on the original list. I, oh. I admitted it from this one. Yeah. We, we at 87 Front Street, there were actually there was only four maples that we could find. We said okay to those. There was a hickory of, of a bigger size that was almost dead, which was okay to, to go. Now, I think it was actually at 100 Front Street as well with the 4 elm. Yeah, yeah. listed at 100. Yeah, the 4 elm were okay to take out. But the and hickory then the 87. Was, oh, you're saying the hickory, the hickory was. 100 Front. Okay. Listed at 100. I had it in the, the other column, but I could have been wrong. Okay, then there was seven maples at 87 Front Street, or 89. They were okay. The three elms and a maple clump at 90, across from 95 Front Street were okay. The one maple, 12 to 18, and 18 to 24 at 95 Front Street were okay to take down. And I think that does... All of uh, the only other thing that I think I had on um, that we had looked at were two big uh, oak leaders um, that were bigger than five inches in diameter. Um, there was one at across from 63 Front Street uh, between poles 26 and 27, mm. which is between six and 12 inches in diameter. That was one that was just hanging, you know, probably less than a foot above the wire. And then there was the other one, a much larger leader, which um, I think originally we had looked at that tree for removal, but you know we determined that that one branch take would the one branch take off. the one branch off. Okay. I think I think I remember those. Yeah. yeah. 
So you're not going to take the tree, just pull up, take off the yep. leader. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we got the list. I see no public comment. Entertain a motion to uh, remove such trees and branches as, we, as discussed. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone staying? Motion carries. Okay. I think we're down to one page on Ash Street we missed. And, and Wilson. And Wilson. And if we, depending on how fast we walk, we've got something going on at 11 o'clock after you. So we're going to try to get there and... Yeah, that might be a little optimistic. I think there's a lot of stuff. I mean, the on Wilson, the number of number of trees wise. Yeah. Well, we'll do our we'll do our best, and we'll spot the car. Okay. And yeah. we'll, we'll that'll help make things a lot easier, better. And if you bring, I mean, I have my other Wilson Street sheets, I think. But if you have a new sheet. I haven't. Um, I have not looked at Wilson okay. myself, so we'll okay, probably end up so coming up with a new sheet after we look at it together. Okay. Is Jim going to have the uh, notice sign to be able to yes. stack up? Yeah. I'll bring staples and staplers. Again. I've got another st hammer stapler that I can get as well. So maybe we can go a little faster this time. Yep. Yeah, well. Thank you very much. You've been very cooperative, and thanks for coming by on Saturday. <laughs> no problem. Chris. We, unfortu no unfor <laughs> unfortunately, uh, I, I think Elaine thought she was posting it for Saturday, no, I didn't. <laughs> but she posted it. I mean, the other thing is, you know, what we, we could do if you wanted to do it later on this coming Saturday, that would be fine with me as well, because uh, I know we had somebody uh, at one point we had suggested one o'clock, so I don't know if you had something at ten. One o'clock would actually be better for me. Okay. We can we. Would, how, how, people that wanted to go on Saturday, which time do you prefer? Later. Let, let. I could try to make you the work. Sometimes I get kid activities. That throws a little bit of a curveball, but I'll work whatever the, whatever's best for the group. I'll do my best to get there. I'm fine. I have no life, so it doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you, do you want to do it at 1 instead? If it's better, I'm fine. Given that we inconvenienced you last weekend, we'll change the date, the time to a one. I appreciate it. Well, then are we still going to try to get another clock at? Um, yes. At uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then grab lunch, and then you can meet out uh, with Chris over at uh, Corner Wilson in uh, one thirty-five at one o'clock. At one o'clock, one p.m. Every source eleven is Leonard. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate everyone that was walking with me and helped me get my steps in for those days. <laughs> I actually made my goal, I think, on each of those two. Yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> so uh, I would like to get started on the pruning itself uh, immediately, to be honest. You know, I'd like to have my tree crews, if they can actually start later on this week, on all, all the roads except for what do we Ash, have? Front, uh, North and South Mill, and Wilson. So the other ones I would like to have them start pruning this week on those. Can we write a, a letter so they can start? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so we've decided um, on everything except Wilson, so we can write that up. Well, we're going to do some more on Ash Street. Ash. But that will get you going. We might have a week or two of good, good weather yet. Yeah. So you okay. want to continue the hearing? Continue the hearing till. Well, if, it, if you think it's going to be short, at the next meeting, the next week in half an hour. I think we're, I think a half an hour we can get through that list. I mean, we did pretty well this last time. We might have more butters from Wilson Street because it's a cantankerous bunch over there. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't say that. Concerned, <laughs> cantankerous. <laughs> That's a little mean. <laughs> no. No. I mean invested. Invested group. No, it's... <laughs> engaged. Engaged, but engaged. <laughs> and, uh, so, 9.15 on the 21st? Okay. Look for a motion to continue the public hearing to 9.15 on the 21st. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. And just, I guess, again, Saturday is going to be 1 o'clock, not 
nine o'clock, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know if you were here. There's 11 o'clock sidewalk. Yep. Okay. Let's see where we can get through some of this other stuff. You're patiently here for which one? Uh, the legacy. agricultural restriction. Ah, for legacy. Let's do that one next. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. See you. Okay. This one was added a little late to the to the gen within time, but but a little later. And there you go. So I took the original master plan and I overlaid the proposed agriculture restriction, and then I cut and pasted out Western Nursery site plan on there, too. Mm -hmm. I think there were a couple of hundred scale plans to work with. So, so it shows where it is so, in relation to the so, site plan recently approved for Western Nurseries. So from originally from this, this is the area that's in uh, the Osmond. Correct. This, this part of the site plan is outside the that's Osmond. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're looking and to the original master plan. This was going to be restricted land. This little piece. This was going to be restricted mm -hmm. land, and the new one restricts land where? It's in yellow. all the yellow. Restricts so so the restricted land goes from basically a detention pond to this additional land to up here. Is this the south portion or the north portion? This is, this is in the village center. This is oh, where okay. Western Nurseries oh, currently right. is. Behind. This is uh, new Rogers' road. new house, right, or right. old house. Yep, yep, yep. There's the new north road. Right. So it's a little further down. So eventually, um, just like on the north side where we, the restricted land was, land was restricted before there was a site plan for it, when someone comes in for a site plan with that, they'll have to modify the buildable area at the same time, the special permit. Yep. So it's kind of doing it backwards, but there's a precedent now. And, and Roy's motivation for adding more restricted land is to try to create more buildable land somewhere else? Um, we need to correct. They have to, overall, throughout the whole site, I think they have to create 77 acres of agricultural restricted land. You got it. So it goes toward that total. And Weston Nurseries, I wish they were here, they, they, would, they would like this area as the agricultural instead of some of the other areas that we had previously determined it, to that to be. And th after this, there still be a deficit, so they're still working toward that Correct. 77 acres. Did Weston provide any context or rationale as to why they were they desired this area to be agriculturally restricted as opposed to the, what was originally proposed? Uh, they don't need 66 acres of growing area. Okay. Where did the 66 acres come? The 77 acres of, it was part of the master plan special program. For some reason, well, that was what was proposed. I think that's what they thought they needed at the time. And I, did, I don't did, want to did, speak for, so I'm sorry. Yeah. Did, did the town have a requirement for 77 acres for some other reason? No. So it we just... Just to accommodate what the nursery is growing. And any other, you know, I think people thought, well, what if the residents want to have some community garden or sure. something like that? Well, and, and put it in, in more context. Western Nurseries, the Mesits, are in the process of financing the building, I think, that we approved. Mm -hmm. In order to get this financing done, they need Roy to release his rights because the mortgage company is going to, wants to stand first in line instead of Roy, I think. Got it, for that problem. And I think Roy is trying to create more non-buildable land. Uh, I think at the end of the day I'm not as worried about it because if there's more buildable land, I'll say up closer to the, or non-buildable land up in the thing, we'll have plenty of, you know, to make the 500 acres for sure. Mm -hmm. That That's my suspicion, suspicion that, that 
this pipe is going to get more non-buildable. Yeah, we will have the nine other five hundred acres pretty I mean, easily. It, and even with this, I mean, right today, Western Nurseries people, the Mezes don't. Well, they own this land, and they're not building the village center. And if their case changes where they do something else, then we want to make sure that they have enough buildable land to build it. And this is, obviously this was always in there. That's what is up there on the, up on the top as well. And this is wet up in here. Mm -hmm. So that would never get built. Nope. So you're talking about some of the, I'm going to say the relatively non-prime, uh, you know, if you're going to build the village center, you're, you're, you're really not into there. You want to be at the intersection or along East Main. Yeah. High traffic. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah, uh, along Legacy Farms Road might be high traffic too, or more traffic. Yeah, but and not uh, right. Yeah. The reasoning they put that there is they have their new center right in the in the rear. Yeah. This has always been their yards. It'll always continue to be their yard. Yeah. Anything they do in front of that is going to be commercial retail. Yeah. I think the original concept for the village center was that most of nurseries would be in the back anyway. Right. So that yeah. was right. where they were always. Right. right, they would be there. So mm -hmm. it kind of fits in, into the overall concept. The best thing in the world, I, but it's, I don't own Western nurseries, is I'd move it closer to the retirement home where they have hundreds of feet of frontage, Back over. sell this off to Roy and be done with it. <laughs> That'd be nice. I mean, then we get our village center, they would have a nice standalone garden center as opposed mm -hmm. to, and, but, like I said, I don't own it and I can, to love our family, you know, I can dream about being able to do it, but not. Uh, go ahead, Rick. Can we have a definition of, uh, what agricultural restriction means? Um, yeah. the, what the covenant says. Which is, so it's the same covenant that was approved by the mm -hmm. council during the special permit process. So yeah. But in the layman's terms, it, does it mean that they will grow or they will not grow? They have a set of criteria that they can do on there. They can grow on there. And, and they can even make some kind of small structures of certain stuff, but it's all ag-related type stuff and, and they're not going to, well, I guess trees are still growing when they're sitting there in the root ball right. <laughs> waiting to be sold, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it, they, they meet the definition of, of what is required or allowed in that area. So right now that's all cleared and uh, previously yeah. used and, and as agricultural yeah. and... They're, they're putting their new road into the parking area. This is the building so that you can see this is the road we approved in the parking lot for the commercial building. And then there was some more parking off over to here. Detention pond I think was here. Mm -hmm. There's another detention pond somewhere. I guess it's this one. Yeah. And then there's they one extended. right along the road too that isn't part of, you know, this that this doesn't show the detention pond. I think that's right We put that one that we put in for Legacy Farms North. Mm -hmm. North. So concerning the order that we're handling this, or th that's being presented to us, uh, it, historically it's been the Mezzets and then the steel happened, and the Mezzets are still using this, uh, and they still own this now, but the idea is that uh, they'll own this in the future, but how does... How we we don't it? have the right of first refusal anymore. Right. Oh, you will not? Well, no, I'm sorry. The We will, barring... Uh, barring that they don't go under? You got it. You got it. If if the bank takes it because they loan the money... The out, bank's now... The bank is oh, first, first in line. In line. You the got bank it. would be happy to sell it to somebody as quickly as they could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so question, my question is, why, why are you asking for this as opposed to the Mezzets? The Mezzets couldn't be here, so we're the next best party. Mezzets have already signed it. Yeah. So and, that, and they're looking to get it financed pretty quickly. So, 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 I mean, quite frankly, this diminishes the value of, of this piece of property for, for the Mezzets, but they're aware of that. I, 
by signing it. I, in my opinion, I mean, it puts a restriction on your land that you didn't have. Yeah, and, and previously that was part of the commercial parcel. It still is. It, 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 the uses for their commercial, for Weston Nursery's current commercial operations, yeah. are allowed on that parcel. So, but by making it restricted, agriculture restricted, no commercial could later go on that. So, if someone, unless it was agricultural, yeah. unless it was agricultural, you can, you can so build a garden center there. The, if they, the if the um, mm -hmm. Mesits or whatever eventually sold the whole thing off to the, in the village center parcel for some other commercial entity, they mm -hmm. couldn't use that land except for some kind of an agricultural thing, but it couldn't be any kind of other commercial, whereas Correct. right now it could be. Correct. Correct. Yeah. But so you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily put commercial operations back there because mm -hmm. they would all want to be towards the front. Well, well it depends on how big the thing ends up right, being too. Right. I mean sure. it's you know, it's yeah. I mean it's kind of too bad. I mean, when we did the whole master plan in this with Sasaki, there was sort of a formula of, you know, <laughs> keeping in the black that included a certain amount of commercial, and that village center parcel was the key piece of commercial on it. It's a shame to kind of limit it. But it's supposed to be mixed use. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be mixed use. We haven't had any mixed. It's all residential so far. So we're knocking down another piece of what could be the commercial yeah. component, yeah. which yeah. is... I, th I think there's going to be a surplus of restricted land at the end of but the day. But once it's restricted, you can't no. go back. You can, we, can, we, we can go back move. and we can shift it. You, you can, can move things We can shift it. We can shift it. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Yeah. So if there were some entity in the future for whom it was advantageous to make bigger, have a bigger piece of commercial there, if they came to this board, we could conceivably Provided that we have 500 right. acres of restricted land right. Correct. overall. And, and what we can do is move some of the agricultural to the site mm -hmm. and some of that other stuff around to there. One of the things that you could come back with us and maybe we, we think our memories back of why we want 77 acres of agricultural land. Uh, I can quickly speak to that. Um, yeah. And I believe that was brought on by Weston Nurseries at the time. They were going through uh, some flux as to how big they wanted to be. They didn't know how big yeah. they were going to be. And now that they, they kind of have a clear view of what they want to be, they they don't seem to need that much uh, agricultural acreage. Well, that might be something you come back when we amend the master plan special permit. Mm -hmm which we'll, we're doing in the process of even at the next meeting or whatever. But we do want to wait till the end. We can we could wait more to the end, but yeah. you know it's it's mm. it's a good idea. Well, see how you know the most the most of the north side by by the end of the spring will probably be figured out. So okay, so. Entertain a, a motion to sign the agreement. Is that what? Yeah, it just needs one signature. So it's oh. authorize the chair to sign. Off, it. Motion to authorize the chairman to sign the restricted land use covenant for Legacy Farms. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Further discussion. Is the chair interested in signing that? Yeah, I mean, I support this. Well, I mean that. Yeah, I signed for the board, I guess, if, after you guys voted. <laughs> so if I summarize my understanding of this correctly, this is something that right now the Mesits need for Correct. their business purposes. And in the future, should Western Nurseries no longer operate or Mesits have other plans, we are not, we are not totally losing this piece of land for some kind of commercial use. There is still a vehicle that it could be restored to its previous functioning yeah. as long as if there's this board if if this board would do it and if there's 500 acres right. of right. Old, right as long as the numbers land. as long as the numbers still work the formula still works but there is a mechanism to switch yeah. this back if there were a need for that to yeah. have some kind of a commercial and, function and, and, and what triggers that to your to your comment there is that a Commercial developer would come in front of this board and yes. make, make application. a proposal or an application, yep. and have yep. to show that they can still make the numbers work on the on the total overall restricted land that's on the entire parcel. Yeah, 
Okay. So it's not like a conservation restriction on land where Dude. once it's it's set once in it's stone, you can never go back. Right. It's, it's done. Oh, sorry. It's, okay. They can move around until it's kind of done. Until it's locked. It's only done the 500 it, acres. Well, as long as you have the, the amount well, of the total amount. Right. No. Right. Right, today we have 500 acres, Correct. and she does an accounting every time we do one of these to things. To make a change. Yeah. And, it's you kind of still know. Add up. Right. The shells still need to cut out. We oh. should actually have a plan for you guys for the remainder of the south side here in the next week or so. The south side or the north side? South. Remainder of the south. It's not all restricted yet. It's not all ah, done. Ah, mm -hmm. okay. So we are we are still have at the current time is a deficit of 177 <coughs> acres. So working toward the four, 500 or 177 acres short so far. So I mean, it, it, as it progresses. So but what we have not so far advanced. Well, that, but just to clarify that that area uh, is everything outside of the development pods. Sure. So that is that's area that was never going to be developed on anyway. Sure. So just just want to clarify. Yeah. Right, but the the processing operation yeah. was. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. You might want to look at some of that south area. Well, right now, I guess south side we have the maximum number of units. But anyway. We'll so you're 177 acres short over the total of land. Of the 500. So we're of the 500. The 500. Right. It doesn't matter whether it's on south or north. It's just right. the total. Correct. So they still need to find another hundred, another 177 as acres. A, as opposed to commit. <laughs> it's, it's not, yeah, it's... It's but not like we're short 177. We just haven't put it into conservation. Yeah, conservation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, as the Earmark. development gets designed. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. But you know, some of the things I saw in the and we're not talking about tonight too much the Pulte application. If you got this little sliver of conservation land in between two rows of houses, uh, I don't know how this board's going to feel about some of those. You know, it just you know you got to it's got to have some public use of some sort. Yeah. And not just be part of the backyard of. It's not quite in the spirit of what the board was initially. Well, I, maybe it, maybe it's it, maybe it's a trail that's too. going through there that I just didn't see on the map. Yeah, but but, nice trail, uh, but yeah. I didn't see where you know. I mean, it's anyway. Okay. So we we haven't voted yet, though, have we? All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. All those abstain. Motion carries. And I'll sign it. I guess I'll get a sign right real quick. Wait, what? Um, he's picking that up oh. tomorrow, I believe. And do we keep the copy? Or? Yes, the copy is for you. So I'll give this back to you. Okay. we got a lot of work to do in a few right. more minutes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay, Conley Hill responds. States, I believe it was two lots, lots 18 and, 18 and 19. These are the last two lots for that. Motion to uh, sign my lot release. I'll move. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. How many signatures do you need on that? Five. Okay, so you guys keep signing. Okay. Christian Estates, request for performance bond guarantee. It looked like we got everything <coughs> pretty well set. The only thing that I was unclear of was where the road is a little bit shorter, or not as tall as it was on the plan. It's a little lower. A little lower. But everyone says it seems to be working. Are you? Yeah, no problems have been identified. It's just they're pointing out that it's lower. Okay. And. And we don't have uh, legal descriptions for the easements. Okay. Yeah, but that's the only thing. That used to be so, so, what is the request for? So, legal easements is a thousand dollars. And if you kept the twenty, so it'd be twelve hundred bucks if you kept the. You kept the contingency on that, mm -hmm. so if you take forty, forty-three five sixteen minus twelve hundred bucks, which would be forty-two three twelve. We just go by what we need to retain. We don't have to do the math. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Motion to uh, reduce the bound amount to twelve hundred dollars. 
Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain the motion then. So moved. Moved. Second. Second. Further discussion? Seeing none. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. 85 West Main Street. They added a window to the front, which is next to a door. That seemed to be fairly trivial. And they moved one tree from the main building to the west side of the property line because it would block the signs. They're and not here. It's sort of hard. That's the only tree. And did they go through design review? They were scheduled to, but they did not attend, and so the board did not review it. Given that nobody's here, I think we let this one slide. Tell them to come back. Great. Yeah. Right? Great. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. No action. Maspinock Woods. We have a marketing sign. They're not here due to illness. <laughs> okay. But that one is fairly self explanatory. It seems fine. And look for a approval of the sign with conditions that it not be lit and requires the removal of the sign when all the units have been sold and that it, the final placement be confirmed not to block any sight distance. So moved. Moved and seconded. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Performance guarantee release, which is uh, 68 Elm Street, 5 Parkwood Drive, 42 South Street, and 80 South Street. The first one's Perkin Elmer, correct? Right. 42 is a EMC building, right? Right, they added two. And 90s. 80 is another EMC the, building? There were changes in the 90s, and we've held the plans in the same Right. And and they didn't even miss the money, <laughs> but but Elaine's feeling guilty. <laughs> so uh, I, can't use it. I would. Uh, and you didn't even say how much those are. Those probably like five thousand dollars. Oh. I'm. How did you identify? Did you you say? Just was looking at a paperwork? list of bonds and wondering why we still have them. <laughs> Fifteen years later, why not? <laughs> well. There's no object. Be, be ready to explain why. I, the Perkin Elmer's is fairly new, but the, the two EMC ones, yeah. tell them Jeez. thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the Perkin Elmer buildings were just sold for $31 million. Yeah. Yeah. When, recently? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like in the last, last week? week. Or? Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Uh, motion to, uh, to uh, return the performance guarantees on those three properties. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded for the discussion. Seeing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Discuss the right turn on West Main Street to Lumber Street. We're going to put together a statement of work and we'll either use some of the planning board engineering money, which we got a small amount this year, and or if we need more, we'll use the money to from uh, that Paul gave us as mitigation. This would, I, I want. I think we need to do it in a couple of steps. The preliminary step is the goal is to get the easement from Cumberland Farms. So we need to engineer it enough. We need a, a a concept plan, a concept budget, and uh, an easement plan for the small triangle we need from Cumberland Farms. And that's kind of the first phase. And then the second phase would be uh, construction drawings. Mm -hmm. And third phase would be uh, engineering supervision and propose to put it out to bid, work with the, either the engineer, town engineer or uh, the, the DPW. Yeah. So, so that's 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 what we're we're going to be working on. I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of it and was everything was going good. Uh, 
So let's see, zoning advisory committee update. Um, nothing more to add from the memo list of the items that they've taken action on so far uh, that I listed there. Uh, so you'll be seeing articles for animal shelters, dog daycare, and changes in the hotel overlay district. Um, they still have a lot of other things on their plate, but they're, they're getting through them one by one. The ones that are most important, I think, to me and maybe the board members, we, in the housing section, and talked about garden apartments, which are very simple ones. It's on their list. Yeah, I know. I don't know when they'll be reviewing it. But. Well, let's... Uh, how's the discussion going on on the uh, Finn Perry's type property other than the hotel? Um, so they've discussed it twice now, and I think they'll be discussing it again, um, scaling that back. Um, those original proponents are not involved anymore, mm, so okay. um, it's others who are who are talking about that, and so I mean it's not done, but I think scaled much scaled back from from last time. So I think it's always better to have a maybe. proponent for a project as opposed to trying to come up with the idea. On the come with up the idea. I mean, conceptually, idea. All, all the all the problems with that site, you needed a proponent that was willing to to enter into agreements to 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 do water and sewer and traffic and do the heavy lifting, do all the heavy mm -hmm. stuff, and mm -hmm. and it's it's not necessarily the zoning problem; it's mm -hmm. the everything else problem. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's my opinion. So it's you know it's a wide ranging discussion, and I don't know where it's going to end. I I could <laughs> see where that committee could. could have a fun time with that one. Uh, okay. Um, any comments, questions to the minutes of November second? Uh, we have one one minor change that on the time that we continued the public hearing to seven thirty instead of seven fifteen on page. I guess you found page four on the bottom. Page four on the bottom. Oh, so 7.30. Yes. Yeah. Any other comments, questions in the minutes? I motion that we move the minutes without correction. Mm -hmm. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. Okay. Correspondence. I thought mm -hmm. in the packet there was a couple of CBA decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, to think of what other things that are kind of going along. There is a um, safety study that the town has, has started for Legacy Farms Road North. It's probably going to take several months to complete it. But the contact has been signed and they are starting to do work on that project. And we can talk about that at some other time if anyone wants to talk more about it. But what is the safety study? Uh, the uh, circles. Oh, 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 right, right. So, I think they figured out roadway already. No. Yeah. And I, you might have seen that they, Roy started clearing on Rafferty Road. The, the trees are all down and, you know, they're working hard on it. And, you know, this has been a fairly good December so mm -hmm. far construction mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. So people are oh. working and Asphalt plants are still open, and yeah. uh, we're having trouble with Eversource getting poles done in the town. The road poles still in Legacy Farms Road North, or Franklin Road, whatever it's called these days. Uh, the town can't get Eversource to do work at the pump station. Uh, it's causing the town all sorts of bunch. And Paul's cross the road thing for the Eversource. They were ready to do the work on starting this Monday, but the town wouldn't give them a permit until the Eversource does the poll over on Wood Street so that the town can finish their project. So I, I just, I, to me, I, I just don't understand all that logic, but I did, when I talked to Chris, I said, hey, I meant to talk to him about it today. He said, can you put at least one word in to go solve it? I mean, Eversource also got the DPU to approve that South Station or South Street 
substation yeah. mm -hmm. with uh, in the DPU over over road every one of the town's objections. Oh, they gave them blanket zoning relief. Hmm. You know, they asked for those masts that were 75 feet tall. We right. said, okay, but only 75 feet. They just threw away the height restriction. So if they make them 100 they feet, want. they do whatever they want. Same with the setbacks and a bunch of other stuff. They will, however, need to apply to you for an earth removal permit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I got a little bit of fun, right? Because it's not a right? by law. I can't believe it. Ah, really? <laughs> Good. Got one bullet left. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have one more meeting before Christmas. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, okay. Uh, looking for a motion to adjourn. If nobody else has anything else, I have one thing. Well, go ahead. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Mm. Tomorrow. Yep. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big one this year too. Six zero. Yeah. So <laughs> 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 nice. you wish. <laughs> hey, I'm on the dole as of this month. <laughs> Okay, motion to adjourn. <laughs> was a compliment. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Anyone abstain? Motion carries. <laughs>